Hi, it's Marie Louise here, the Danish painter, and welcome to the video. I uh, wanted to just show my face and say hello, and uh, I'm really excited about uh, today's video on loose landscapes. Also, I wanted to tell you that uh, if loose landscapes is something you're interested in, I'm working on an online course. Uh, called Loose Atmospheric Landscapes in Acrylics. So if that's something you might be interested in, check out the link down below. And uh, without much further ado, uh, let's uh, jump right into today's video. First, a quick look at the colors in today's painting. I have my usual trio of burnt sienna. Uh, yellow ochre and uh, indigo and then I um, wanted to try out this color I've had for a while called burgundy um, it just looked really interesting and I'll be using only one size of brush a one and a half inch and my painting knife I wanted to talk a bit about something that is uh, quite hard for many of us uh, and that we struggle with and that is uh, staying loose or painting in a loose style. For uh, a long time I painted very realistically and also in a very detailed manner and um, so I know the struggle and I thought why not share uh, some of the things I do to uh, stay loose when I paint uh, landscapes. One of the best ways to stay loose is to use a large brush. The ones I use are uh, household brushes from the hardware store, so they're not for any kind of fine art brushes or anything. They're cheap, but they're also um, excellent. I'm doing a very basic uh, landscape here and uh, once this layer is dry I want to uh, glaze on top with that uh, burgundy uh, color that I showed you. Um, if you are interested in uh, a video about glazing I'll uh, link to that uh, at the top of the screen. This burgundy color is very transparent and I really like the new colors that are created when I glaze, um, glaze it on top of the yellow underneath. I am looking at the big shapes in the picture and uh, adjusting them, making sure that they are uh, interesting and uh, that they move the viewer's eye around the composition. It's much, much easier making the adjustments now than uh, later on. So uh, Really, it's worth checking um, your values and uh, the big shapes um, as you move along in your painting process. Now I want to build up some more layers and uh, yellow ochre is uh, a nice opaque color so uh, I can use it on top of my darks to create interest and life in those uh, darker areas. I just want to cover up this dark blob right there. Just uh, adding a bit and uh, now I'm really just uh, adding different 
that uh, mixtures of uh, yellow ochre uh, and also a bit of that burgundy and uh, to uh, just get different shades of uh, warm and uh, beautiful colors. I want to add a nice uh, mixture of yellow ochre with white here and uh, then while the paint is still wet I'll spray a bit of water on it and let it sit for a while and then wipe it off and thereby uh, get a um, very nice uh, pattern in my paint. I use this technique to create texture in my paint uh, and you might think well what are those marks what's it supposed to be uh, is it flowers is it uh, what is it um, but really uh, it's up to you and it's um, it's another way to stay loose because um, it's up for interpretation you can use um, this texture to um, to areas so uh, here in front it could be uh, it could be flowers uh, in some other area of another painting it could be uh, maybe some rocks or some pebbles I also use it sometimes in my sky area of my paintings to um, suggest uh, rain or snow I'm adding some blue grayish blue tones to the distant hills to make them recede and I also do want to um, remember to take some of this color again and uh, use it a little bit of it in the foreground area to uh, to tie the painting together and uh, help create uh, harmony also, I uh, really like the contrast of these warm golden colors in the foreground and then these cooler gray tones um, in the distant hills. I feel the clouds got a little bit too dark, so I'm just going to lighten those up a bit. Mm, that sky still looks a bit too dark once it dried so I'm gonna give it another layer and uh, try lightening it up uh, a bit more. I feel like the sky is still too dark so I'm going to give it yet another layer um, and add even uh, more titanium white to this uh, mixture and uh, see if that uh, does the trick. And I'm going to add some of those lines. If you've uh, seen some of my other videos, you know I uh, really like to add these uh, lines uh, by uh, scraping into the or drawing into the paint while it's uh, still wet. Adding a uh, bit more of that bluish gray to the foreground and um, I think we're ready to have a look at uh, how the painting looks. I think there's quite a bit of texture and things going on in the foreground, so I'm not going to 
add anything there but uh, I do like a few more of these lines up here that burgundy color turned out very nice in this painting I like how it gave the whole landscape a sense of springtime so did you try out a uh, new color that became a uh, favorite or is your new color still in the drawer with your art supplies? Let me know in the comments below and see you next time.